Sure. Um, and I think it's actually the, the best first step in unpacking is to define what we mean by metaverse, because a lot of people have different ideas. Uh, to me, you know, at the broadest sense, the metaverse is this big societal transition from flat media viewed in the third person to immersive media experienced in the first person. And so it's this really big change in the role of the user from, uh, from being an observer on the outside to a participant on the inside. And, and that change actually means that the platform providers, the, the, you know, the entities that will manage these large platforms will have significantly more uh, control and influence and knowledge about people's lives. Well, and, and it's worth also just mentioning that when we think of the metaverse, we really should think of it in kind of two flavors. It could be a fully virtual world, like uh, you know, a, a world that, that you might see meta uh, talking about where uh, people are avatars in this completely virtual world, having social interactions. Uh, I would call that a virtual metaverse. Uh, but it also can be layers of virtual content overlaid on the real world. Uh, by augmented reality glasses, I, I would call that the augmented metaverse. And, and it's, it's worth mentioning both because if we, if we think you know, 10 years out, uh, we can easily imagine that people will spend most of their time in the metaverse. They won't, have, you know, they won't be in a fully virtual world most of the time. They, they uh, might be spending a few hours a day shopping, socializing, uh, having business meetings. Uh, but the rest of the time, when they're out in the real world, walking down the street, um, there's a very good chance that, that most people will be wearing augmented reality glasses from uh, big companies like Apple and Google and Sony and Samsung. And, uh, and that will bring the metaverse uh, to be all around us uh, throughout the entire day. Lewis, you've also spoken about the three M's of the metaverse, haven't you? Uh, its ability to monitor manipulate and monetize us. That sounds all a bit dystopian to me. It does. And, um, and it's, uh, the best way to describe that is to think about um, today's social media. Today's social media is really an ecosystem that's built on uh, tracking people, uh, where they click, uh, what they read, who their friends are, profiling people, and then using that information to then target people with content, targeted advertisements, targeted news feeds, targeted introductions to friends. And that's the business model of social media. And um, it's created lots of problems uh, for society. Uh, it, it creates bias in the world. It, it could promote disinformation, misinformation. Uh, now, if we look to the metaverse, we could say these same things will, will happen, but be much, much worse. And, and that's because what, instead of just simple tracking of people, we can now say that really evolves into monitoring of people. Because instead of just tracking where you click and what you read, uh, metaverse platforms will be able to track um, where you go and what you do and who you're with. And and not just in a virtual world, but also in the real world, as you're walking down the street with augmented reality glasses. Do, do, Lewis, uh, does, does, does all this worry you? I mean, you talked a, a second ago about regulation. Uh, how can it be regulated? And who's clever enough to be able to regulate a global metaverse? Yeah, well, regulation's always hard. Uh, when you say regulation, uh, people get nervous, especially content creators, people being uh, building creative things. In my mind, it's the platform providers that really need to be regulated because they will have so much information about what everybody's doing. They, they will basically be able to see where you are, who you're with, what you're doing, and then they'll also be able to inject content into your world, into your experiences on behalf of, of paying third parties. And so if we're going to regulate anything, we should regulate the platform providers so that they have to inf inform you if they're tracking uh, if they're tracking where you are and what you're doing and where you're looking and how long your gaze lingers. I'm also a little concerned about the privacy issue. Some people say you won't have any privacy left if you adopt the metaverse. It's true. I mean, uh, if uh, when you're in the metaverse, uh, the platforms are going to be able to track everything. 
they'll, they'll even track your facial expressions, your vocal inflections. Uh, people are developing technologies for tracking your vital signs, blood pressure, uh, respiration rate, heart rate. They can do really interesting things with that, but the privacy issues are, are really significant. And Lewis, you've worked at the cutting edge of the tech industry for oh, quite a few years now and seen many advances come and go. What makes you think the metaverse will stick? Yeah, no, it's a question I ask myself a, a lot. I, I started working <laughs> in virtual reality in, in 1991. So I've been, I've been in this field for over 30 years. Uh, I've seen hype, you know, cycles of hype come and go. There was a big hype in the early 90s, big hype in the uh, 2010s, and now another big hype. The thing that's different this time is that the hype is driven by large corporations rather than startup companies. Uh, com corporations like Meta, Google are investing billions, in some cases tens of billions, in, uh, in making the metaverse happen. Lois Rosenberg, many thanks to you for joining us here on the agenda. Yeah, thanks for having me.